Hey there, everybody, and welcome to this book review of Journey to Recovery by me, Dr. Donnelly Snipes. You can read this book for free with Amazon Kindle Unlimited. In Journey to Recovery, what I did was I took the activities that I have used over the past, you know, 20 some odd years in treating people with co-occurring mental health and addictive issues, and I tried to put it into a very concise format. Now, it's like 340 pages, so I don't know if you'd consider that concise, but there are a lot of pages that are just worksheets, so don't like freak out. I start out by talking about chemical and behavioral addictions and mental health issues. What are they? What causes them? Where do they come from? And how they kind of make sense in some sort of way. How, how does it make sense that someone would develop an addiction? Well, an addiction provides a means of escape when nothing else has worked. So in a way, that kind of makes sense. Then we move on to the consequences of addiction and mental health issues. How have these problems kept you from living the highest quality of life that you want to live and that you know you deserve to live? Or maybe you don't know that, but hopefully by the end, you will know that you deserve to live. The next step is learning how to create and maintain motivation for change. Change is hard. I don't care if you're changing, you know, how often you work out or you're changing your attitude or whatever you're changing. It is hard because it takes more energy to do something different. Think about your gas mileage in your car. If you're going the same speed like on the internet in, on the internet gosh on the interstate you use less gas than when you're driving in a city and you've got to stop and start and stop and start it takes more energy to change speeds similarly it takes more energy for us to change behaviors what we're used to takes a lot less behavior it's a automatic thing that we do when we change, we've got to stop, we've got to think, then we've got to do something different. That chapter focuses on helping people figure out what are the ways that I can create goals that are achievable and will make me feel better and help me move towards where I want to be, and how can I maintain motivation even when it's tough? And some days are tougher than others to stay motivated. I move on to help people identify methods of behavior modification. And I don't go super deep into it, but I go deep enough that you learn some of the principles that we use when trying to modify behavior, rewards, punishments, and examining triggers or stimuli in the environment. In addiction recovery, we talk a lot about triggers, but a lot of times we're talking about triggers for the addiction, what triggers people to want to drink or to use. Triggers can also be positive. They can trigger you to want to exercise, to want to practice mindfulness, to want to eat a healthy meal, whatever your triggers are. Triggers can also trigger emotions. You can put things in your environment. You walk in, you see whatever it is. It makes you smile. You just triggered happiness. Behavior modification really helps you hone in on some of those things and ways that you can increase not only the motivation but the likelihood that you will follow through with your goals the next step is developing mindfulness and purposeful action once you know what you want to do then you need to become mindful of what am i doing now am i staying true to my goals am i doing what i'm supposed to do am i getting my needs met is this working for me and purposeful action is using your energy to help you move toward your goals instead of using your energy to, for something that doesn't help you move toward your goals. For example, if you get on social media and you get angry at somebody for something that they said, purposeful action would have you stop and accept that, okay, I'm angry that this person said something ugly to me on, on social media. Now. In the big scheme of things, is using my energy to argue with them or get upset going to help me go get closer to the things and people that are important in my life? Most of the time, the answer is no. Therefore, 
I am going to choose to be purposeful in how I use my energy. And I am on purpose going to choose not to feed into that person's negativity. The next step talks about physical interventions for recovery. Our body helps us feel emotions. Our body helps us have energy. Everything is intertwined. When our body is not functioning well, then we are going to be much more vulnerable to anxiety, anger, depression, and a host of other problems, difficulty concentrating, etc. In order to keep the neurotransmitters that help us feel happy and motivated and clear-headed all in alignment, it's vital that your body is healthy. Basic physical interventions such as getting good quality sleep, drinking enough water, trying to eat a reasonably healthy-ish diet, nothing too crazy, all those are important and they can make a world of difference in people's recovery. You notice we haven't started talking about emotions yet because a lot of times people want to start out with things that are a little bit less threatening. So that's where the mindfulness and physical interventions come in and goal setting and that kind of stuff. That really gets the momentum going. The next step is creating safety because once we move into the things that trigger our depression, anger, anxiety, and guilt, we need to feel like we're in a safe place. So creating safety is the next chapter, which is then followed by causes and interventions for unpleasant emotions. We move on from there to exploring a variety of new coping skills that people can add to their toolbox. No one coping skill is going to work perfectly for everybody or anybody all of the time. It's important that people have a variety of tools in their toolbox that they can explore. In this book, a lot of the tools and coping skills that I present are generally in line with cognitive behavioral approaches, but I do present a few other coping skills that are useful to some people. The next step is to examine our social supports. In recovery, whether it's from addiction or mental health issues, a lot of times it, it's important for us to develop a supportive social network. For a lot of people, though, they don't know how to do that, or their current support system is not real helpful or healthy, or they have abandonment issues. I encourage people to examine what they learned from their family of origin. What did they learn about healthy relationships, unhealthy relationships, and what did they learn about themselves? Then I encourage them to examine what a healthy relationship would look like for them if they had a fulfilling healthy relationship that didn't trigger abandonment fears what would it look like and how can they go about creating that and finally as part of creating healthy relationships i help people learn how to develop assertive communication i wrote this book in a relatively jargon-free way in order to be a good self-help book for people who are beginning their journey into recovery from addiction or mental health issues or both. But it can also be used in group as a foundation and each group session can go through a different section of the book in order to help people move through those stages of early recovery and when i say early recovery i'm talking about this helps people get through maybe the first 12 weeks there's a lot of work to be done in recovery and obviously one book is not going to cover everything but this gets people off to an excellent start again you can find journey to recovery by dr donnelly snipes on amazon.com you can read it for free with amazon kindle unlimited you can buy the kindle version or even get the hard copy version if you just want a book that you can write in and fill out the worksheets right there and and ready for you <music>